Okay, welcome back to another episode of Vintage Fly Tying. Today we're going to be tying a parachute hackle. This is actually a different technique than you see nowadays. Something from my father's original recipe card, which I'll give you a little flash on the screen there. But they uh, basically he ties it sort of upside down, and I'll, on a card it has a little illustration on it. So here's a fly that I tied using this technique, and here is actually something that he tied oh 50 years ago maybe. This is a uh, Looks like a fly that he might have been practicing on, on how to tie the, the parachute. It's not actually a fly, it's just a... Uh, you see he has actually no stem at all. Let me put this in the vise for you here. You can see here, no stem at all, or no post, I'm sorry, no post at all, that he actually stopped, tied around the stem of the feather to create his parachute. Now he didn't uh, put any dubbing or anything else on the hook here, it just Looks like something he was working on, perfecting his parachute. I didn't find any examples of his other parachute flies. Those are lost to time. This here was in the box of old flies that I found. That uh, originated probably in 1970s, so 70 maybe early early 70s, late 60s. So. I'm going to show you this technique. I studied uh, his card and practiced a little bit. And let's see what I can come up with here. First, we're going to start off with a Sabre Hopper Terrestrial. Two extra long, size 14 hook. Sabre is the company there. You can actually tie these on a regular standard dry fly hook. But I was using these and like how they look. Got to put your hook in. Nice and secure. We're going to start with a little thread. 75 denier thread is what I'm using. It's that Royal Sissy that I used uh, on a lot of my videos before. Still got a bunch of it so we're going to use it up. Start the thread, take it back to about the top of the bend of the hook there. Go ahead and cut away your tag end. And we're going to use paint brush for tail. These are uh, just a little cheap paint brush, nylon. What I'll do, I'll take three. If I can get three together here. Cut them away. I want our tails to be a little long, so we're going to... Probably about uh, one and a half size of the length of the hook. Tie right on top. See how that looks. Looks pretty good. Now you can do a couple things here. 
to leave them as they are. It looks pretty good. If you really want to splay them out, take your thread and in between each of the paintbrush fibers, you can put your thread in there. Now you get your really splayed out. Alright, what we're going to use for the post is EP fibers. I've got a clump here. This is actually stuff that I had uh, used on another project. I save a lot of stuff that I think I can use again and here we are using it again. The color I'm using is uh, like a burnt orange. I'm going to lay it right on top. Do a wrap. Pull it up. A couple turns in front of it. A couple turns behind it. Now you want to go ahead and wrap it around. You're going to make a little post here. Once you got it started, Alright, so now you have a little post, everything's sticking straight up, which is not a big deal, It'll, if it's not sticking straight up it will eventually, once you tie, tie everything together. And from here, we're going to add our feather. What I like is, I want the thread on the back side of the hook, and the reason being, is that's how I want to tie the stem of this feather you're doing some practicing, I find if I stick it on this side, it doesn't really work as well. So I've been sticking it on this side, on the back side, and tying it in. You want the dull side of the feather facing you. Go ahead, wrap it around the post a couple times, back around the hook. Now that it's tied in pretty securely, we're going to add our peacock curl. See how I have the back, the uh, good side of the feather is facing you, the dull side is facing me. So what's going to happen, when I wrap it, the dull side is going to be facing up. Get my fat hand out of the way there, see if I can show you again here. The dull side is going to be facing up. What that's going to do, it's going to have the feathers curved up like a, uh, like a bowl shape. If you tie with the dull side facing down, you'll have a, like an umbrella effect. And if that's the effect you want, then you can uh, tie with the uh, dull side down. But his, uh, his notes distinctly say to tie with the doll side facing you so you, they have like a bow effect. So that's how we're going to do it. So, let's add some peacock. Peacock curl that I'm using is from the very top of the feather of the big plume where the peacock curl gets real thin. And I'm going to use two of these. I experimented with big fat pieces of peacock and though they work well I just thought they looked a too, little bit too bulky. So the thinner I got on top here at the peacock the better I thought it looked. It looks a little more bare, a little more sparse 
and I kind of thought it uh, kind of gave me uh, the look I wanted. It reacts well on the water, stays on top nicely. So, take your thread, give it a couple wraps back, tie in your peacock. All the way back to the beginning of the tail. And wrap it back up. And you can jump to the front here. I'm going to short my thread up a little bit here. Alright, now you can do this two ways. You can, if you have a rotary vise, you can spin it on there, or you can go hand over hand. I actually like to use my rotary vise function as much as I can. So I'm going to take my thread, put it on my bobbin rest, and I'm going to spin the peacock curl on there. See how your uh, fiber is touching your pe peacock curl. Just make sure it doesn't get wrapped up in there. So when you get to here, take your peacock curl, wrap it between the feather. I'm going to make sure you just get good coverage here. Now be careful, don't break your peacock curl. You're using the thinnest, most delicate stuff on the feather. So just be careful with it. So when you get to here, take your thread, take your uh, bobbin rest out of the way, take your thread, wrap it over, capture it nicely. Now, you want to take your thread and bring it back to the base of your post. Try not to capture too much of that peacock, but we're going to take this remaining piece of peacock and wrap it back. So just take the two pieces that still remain and wrap it back. And go ahead and tie it off. So now the head's a little fuller, a little bigger. And now you can let me give it a couple more wraps just to make sure here. Take the two pieces of uh, excess peacock, cut it off. I know a lot of guys just break them right off, and I don't, uh, I don't do that. Every time I seem to do that, I'm kind of have a little piece sticking up that I don't want. Okay, so now we have a little post. Your stem. His instructions say to tie it forward. So we're going to go ahead and give it a wrap. And I'm going to cut it away. And there you go. Now we can start wrapping our tackle to create a parachute. So just go ahead and start nice and loosely on the bottom there. What I have been doing is start at the bottom, work my way up a little bit, 
twist it on me there. Start at the bottom, work my way up. Take your time on this. If you don't take your time, you're going to have uh, issues here. Now that I'm up far enough, I'm going to start back down. Make sure your feather still remains upright or uh, dull side facing up. And there you go. Let me give it one more good wrap in there. All the way down to bottom. So I went up a couple wraps, back down, through the hackle, and now I need to tie it off. Take my thread. Tie between the feather and the hackle that I just spun on there. Go down under. Don't catch any of that hackle. Or try not to at least. If you do, it's not really that big of an issue. You can always trim it off a little later. Down under. Down under, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and cut this away. Now we don't need uh, all that there, just enough a little post. See how that looks on your side, it looks pretty good. Alright, so now we're going to use the whip finish tool. Take your whip finisher, this is my big whip finisher. You can see how big it is here, it actually you could use it for saltwater flies or for uh, your bigger streamers. I don't want to tie any saltwater flies, I tie big streamers. So, that's what I use it for typically. Take your whip finish tool and capture underneath as well as you can, down under. Try not to capture any of that. Here we go. Before I pull that tight, let's make sure I didn't screw anything up here. I got a little bit trapped in there, but I'll trim that off. Go one more time here. Down underneath. One more time. Down underneath. Okay. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and trim this uh, extra piece of hackle away. And a piece of uh, that I trapped inadvertently there. All right, pull it nice and tight. Cut your thread away. Whoops. All right, that looks pretty good, huh? Alright, here you go. Now what you can do from here is take your UV finish and take your bobkin 
put a little dab on your bobkin and work it in there against the thread up under the hackle give it a zap Okay, yeah, looks good. There is just a little bit of, of that hackle where I trimmed it out. Don't want to get that out of there just for camera purposes. The uh, fish don't care. Once you get this far, you got yourself a nice little fly. This rides on top of the water very nice. It actually is hard to sink. I uh, haven't been treating these at all with any floatant. You can though if you want. It'll help. And there you go. Got yourself a, a little different way of tying your parachute. Most of uh, the videos I've seen the guys start from the top. Tie that way then wrap it. But uh, this is from his notes 50 years ago. Don't think that's his uh, actual uh, inventive way of doing it. I don't know. He uh, took some classes. He, uh, I know he got together with a bunch of other tires and discussed things and invented things. So, sort of like uh, the pre-internet, how everybody gets together on the internet and discusses ways to tie. And uh, there you go. Get yourself a little uh, parachute dry fly. With the uh, nice little tail. I like these tails. They're uh, just paintbrushes. Get them at any craft store. Wait till they go on sale. But uh, the uh, hackle is a nice, nice saddle that I got. Real nice saddle. It's from uh, Sidling Hill Hackle. It's a Pennsylvania company. It's their number one grade, their best grade. And you can see it's nice and pretty. It's a brown barred. Let me get a nice little close up there. But it's pretty, real pretty. Got this at uh, the grand opening of the Risen Fly Shop in Chippewa, Pennsylvania. It's Beaver Falls address. Great people to deal with. Alright. Hey, if you uh, like this fly, give me a like, give me a subscribe. If you want to see more of these let me know and I do have a few more in his box that uh, in his recipe recipe box actually has to say that I haven't done yet and one of them is a black ant sort of like the beetle that we did before but uh, in the style of an ant so maybe I'll do that one next if I don't get uh, sidetracked with something else all right hope you enjoy it hope you like it and stay safe out there and uh, hope you uh, hope you're all doing well on the streams see ya